Well, hello there, my friends. Bruce here. So, we've got a craftsman, I believe. Yep. Can you see that? 824. That's a misconception. The engine is 800 or 8 foot pounds torque or something crazy like that, right? It's a 205cc. A uh, seven horsepower engine. This one, he says it won't start or it won't stay running. I'm not sure which. It's a really nice snowblower. I don't think there's uh, any wear on it at all. I think I'm going to get the uh, electric starter going. Fuel. You know what? You can't trust anybody. You gotta look, you gotta check everything. He says it's been sitting for a few years. It's fair. Well, looks like it's got a tiny bit of stabilizer in it. So he's doing his best as a as an owner. So I think that gas is good enough to give it a try. So uh, let's just do this now. Pump it a little bit, see if we can get it to leak. No, sir. So let's just give it. Oh, we need to pump the extension cord into the starter. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. Go the other way. Okay, I don't know about you guys. That's a classic, classic clogged carburetor. It fired up, it burnt the gas in the emulsion tube and quit. And then it'll gradually soak through again and in five minutes it'll run for another five seconds. Okay. So right now I've got a coffee can of soap heating up in the, uh, in the house. Mrs. P is going to phone me on my cell phone when it's at 70 degrees and uh, we're going to start working on this carburetor. So walk this way. I think what I want to do, sorry, I'm going to turn this around so don't look. I'm going to just turn you off. So this one does not have a gas shut off. It's quite interesting. The Toro did. So let's get this these covers off of here. There. Under here there will be a, a tube from the primer button to the carburetor. Come on, baby. Good. Just taking off four bolts. A little five sixteenths. It's probably a millimeter similar. I just do what I do. So this should lift off. Oh. Perfect. Okay, we're going to have to get a thing for parts. Right on. Things look pretty darn good, actually. Now, can I store this somewhere? Here maybe? Okay, that might work. Maybe. There we go. So now we have access to the carburetor. Right there. I'm going to lift it up. I'm not even sure if this needs an oil change. Okay.
Hello? Okay, let's take it to 70 and then I'll come in and get it in five minutes. Okay. So, Mrs. P had this in the house. I know, I'm a brave guy, eh? I gave her this and she just, she shot until it hit 70 degrees. And now this one says 66. We'll see what it really is. Seventy. Seventy-one point five. So let's just leave that like that. And I won't need it for a while yet. The heater is on, but it's not heating because it's above 60 degrees. I've set it for 60. Okay, back on the back on the snow blower. I don't know how to do this for you guys. It's because I need room to work and you need room to watch. So first, can I put you over here? Maybe you can look right through that hole there. Uh, right there. Can you see there? Right there. That's the carburetor. Okay, let's take that uh, filter off. I'm going to take the primer line off. This is a newer machine. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Crash. Bash. Now maybe I can unplug the key and we'll just remove this whole thing. Yep. Lovely. He missed that. Oh, it's already been off. This is the kind of thing you look for when you're uh, working on stuff. More light for you. You see right here, the cable clamp is up here, not down here. So that just tells me that uh, the owner was in there. And I think he did tell me that he he had a look. So first of all, I'm going to move that. And I don't know. Talking to myself. Got to close off the gas so it doesn't flow. And then the only other thing to disconnect is the two bolts that holds the carburetor on and the and the throttle arm. So uh, let's just disconnect that gas line first. Coming. Good. And then we use a long torx. Well, can I get at it? These are, I think those are 3 8 if I'm not mistaken. Could be 10 millimeter. Yeah, they're 10. Maybe. Are you watching? That's all I'm going to say. Yes, you are. So 10 millimeter. This might be a little wonky. No, I don't like that. They're also a Torx bolt. I'm going to use this long poker ruler hose it and just see if it works. Because you got to, it's a, it's a distance thing, right? Good. Lovely. Well, I bought these this summer, and I tell you, they it, they've been fantastic. All different sizes of Torx with a six-inch reach. You can't beat it. And today it was a T27. Now I'm going to take this off of here. I don't know. If, yeah, it's been off. So now we have to figure out how to disconnect the spring which is the surge spring or whatever you want to call that. 
Why won't that come off? I'm bending the hell out of it. What seems to be the issue here? Oh, it is off. Okay, now we just have one more bend to get this carburetor off of here. There we go. Oh, I tell you that. I'm going to have to reshape that spring. Good. Voila! Just another run-of-the-mill garden variety modern Briggs metal carburetor. So come over to the bench with me. I'll leave my gloves on for just a little bit longer. It was loose. And we're going to get a little bucket to uh, throw our stuff into. Now, this is what we learned. You know, it's not that bad. Not as bad as the one I did yesterday. Good. Now, in here is the... Uh, Get you looking down a little more. The emulsion tube is right here. This carburetor is pretty darn clean, you guys. Surprising. Can I get this gasket off here without wrecking it? I might leave it on. Ah, here we go. I'm not going to go crazy with the carb spray. Because it's a pretty clean little carburetor. So that should squirt out the bottom. It's plugged. There we go. That furnace does kind of give an element of, it, it brings the stress level up just a tiny bit. This is actually wire from a Cat5 Ethernet cable. Okay, I'm going to poke, so, so you guys saw that, right? I didn't, nothing came out. So we're going to just poke this into here. Oh yeah. Now it should flow. Yep. And this one, when I turn it over, I just did this yesterday, so I'm quite, I'm quite familiar with it. There's a guy there that use, is the slow idle jet. That one's working. There, I saw a flow. Now let's have a look at the at this. Oh yeah, everything's plugged. Good. Oh, not bad. <laughs> I forgot I have this. The guy who sent it to me is probably going. I did this yesterday on video, and he's going to say, "I gave you that thing." Okay. One, two, there should be two more at the base. I forgot all about this. And it's just better than my toothpicks. That was plugged on the vertical side. So there's a T, there's a hole that goes down this way and then there's a hole that goes across that way. And we're just going to make sure that's open. And then we're going to wash our carburetor. Then my buddy Juan's show up and he's bringing two more. I do not. I'm going to leave it. If I wreck it, I'll replace it. So now it's all going to go into here. <coughs> Bolt. 
emulsion tube, pin, needle. I'm going to put this underneath there like that and stick that in the corner. And that should be it. So now walk this way, my friend. We are going to stick that in there. Now, ouch, it's hot, eh? I'm going to go this way. Good. And we're going to start. Heater on. Cleaner switch. See what temperature we're at. 61 degrees. We don't need the heater on when it's running. There we go. 30 minutes, that's a lot. So thanks for that, guys. Now we wait. All right. So now, I'm going to uh, just rotate this by hand, first of all. Oh, we have to... Just takes off the brake. Now we should be able to rotate this with this stick. Yep. Make sure everything's working. Is it turning? Yes, it is. Good. And it looks like... We're going to have to check to make sure that those are, those are uh, what do you call it, that these are shear bolts, not just regular bolts, here and here. Okay, we need a uh, 7 16 wrench. We'll go right away here. I just don't have a place to put everything. I think this one is a shear bolt. No, it's not. I don't think it is. No, it's a grade 5 bolt. Bad, bad. I see it all the time. It's not a surprise. Okay. So, bolt. Let's get the... I got the dropsies, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's get the other one off of there. I think I can do it from that angle. Look at that, eh? Look at how twisted that is. Sorry. Bad, bad, bad. So what do we got? For shear bolts. Okay. So I got the, the new shear bolts in. And I checked the oil in the housing. It's actually grease in there, right there. I just took that off, 13 mil, and I stuck a wire in there and there's grease. Thanks. Okay, this is a belt check. The belts look brand new. That's a corrugated belt, whatever you call it. And this one looks good. The only thing I was nervous about was that screw right there was missing for the cover. So now I gotta find one. And now the carburetor is out of the, uh, or is finished cooking. We're gonna bring it over and have a look. Good. Let's get that carburetor out of there. And I think I'm just gonna rinse it with water. And then a little methyl hydrate. Okay, I'm with you. Don't go away. Don't go away, Matt. Just go away. So here now, we're gonna rinse this. This one. 
all of these guys and the carburetor itself looks good and then we dump him in there like that and then I just take some methyl hydrate and all this methyl hydrate does is it just dissolves with the water and if there's any left in the carburetor it'll burn like methanol but there isn't much of it right like you, know, you got to pick your battles this is probably wood alcohol not grain alcohol if it was grain alcohol you could drink it but don't go there my friends okay so the bowl is full oh. good that's good for that just throw those in there Oop. good good and the bowl now I can take a small amount of air right and we'll just blow this up A little bit of gas should squirt out of the vent, or well, ethanol now, right? And then up through the primer hole, good, into the tower, or that I call the tower, but it's upside down, and then into the jets. All right, now the last few things, and then we can assemble. So now it's just a matter of uh, reassembling this carburetor, and I think you saw me take it apart. I don't want to use up too much of your val valuable, valuable video time. We're just going to put that in the back. <clears throat> I think this is mostly water. I'm going to rinse this cage off outside. So. And we'll talk to you later. All right, my friends. I got the carburetor mostly put back together again. And thanks to, once again, go to Ken, Ken Small Engines, Mr. Mow it all. And uh, this carburetor is holding at seven pounds, if you can see that. And uh, holding steady at seven pounds. I put just a little tiny bit of gas on the needle and that seems to help it seat because there's going to be gas in it anyway, right? But you don't want to suck gas into the mighty vac, right? And that's a good thing. Thank you, Ken. So anyway, Ken is one of the smartest guys I've ever met, but I've never met him. He's a YouTube buddy. We do a stream yard every Saturday, which is like a uh, what do you call it? It's like a Zoom call, but it's uh, nine or ten of us just get together and shoot the you-know-what. And sometimes we talk about small engines, and sometimes we talk about food. Sometimes we talk about, we don't talk about politics much, and we don't talk about money very much. That's a good thing. There's enough of that going on, right? Okay, so 13 millimeters. We're going to do this up tight. gasket has seemed to survive just barely baby now we're gonna hook her back up but I've got a problem with the spring so as soon as I get that done uh, we'll come back and put this carburetor on thank you very much all right let's try this uh, right now I've got this just rigged and hanging we have a primer bulb one, two, put it on choke manually, and it should start. I don't like starting stuff when things are hanging. I don't think she's going to go.
All right. So now all I got to do is change the oil. Do I have any more? Yeah, I got a couple of pivot points I'm going to oil, but yeah. So thanks, guys. All right. I'm just changing the oil. This is the pipe that the oil comes out of right here, and it's nice because it extends out past the edge of the chassis a little bit. But I still splattered some. You know, guy, you guys know me. I'll splatter. I splatter. So I'm just going to put that oil in my five-gallon pail, clean up the mess, and then we'll add, I think it's 600 mils of oil. Good. Now we're going to put some in. You guys don't have to, well, I guess you can watch that if you want. Right. Whee! There. Good. Okay. When we're all done, I'll come back. All right, I removed the bottom skid plate. And if you look down in there, right there, you can see there's quite a bit of rubber coming off the wheel. And I wasn't going to have a look in here. And I thought, well, you know, it's a used snowblower, not a new snowblower. So I'm just going to clean that black stuff off of there with what we call hydrocarbon and then we'll just put the cover back on. I'm just going to clean that clean that black stuff off of there. I've already cleaned off some you can see there and I'll just oil the shaft lightly. I like to use transmission fluid because it's a transmission. There that looks better eh? Now there is an outside chance we're going to have to set this cable a little tighter, this one here, that pulls up the disc to the plate, but uh, I don't think so. We'll try that in a bit. So anyway, I think I'm done this. I'm just going to put that cover back on, four bolts. You're going to have to watch that. Thank you for joining me again on this uh, Craftsman uh, 7 horsepower snowblower tune-up and carb clean. Thank you. And yes, my friends, this is why ratchet wrenches are a must on snowboards. Like, you couldn't put a socket in there, and if you did a regular wrench, which is the other end, you go a half, a quarter, carry, and a half, carry. With a ratchet wrench, you just go like that. Gotta lift her up again. Which way do we have to go here? So I'm just making more length on this rod so it pushes down sooner. I'll tell you when I get her.